Okay, so here we have question number eight from the Legacy C1 June 2018 GCE paper, which also happens to be question number five from my practice paper C uh, for the P1 um, students, students who are taking P1, Pure Mathematics 1 International A level. Okay, here we have a diagram given uh, with some graphs, straight lines drawn, line one and line two. It says figure two shows a straight line L1 with equation 4y equals 5x plus 12. Okay, let me write that on there so we can have it there. Line 1. Okay, so this is 4y equals 5x plus 12. Okay, it says state the gradient of line 1. Okay, to state the gradient of line 1, uh, we, have to find, we have to basically rearrange it so it says y equals. So this is y equals. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write them as separate terms. So y equals 5 over 4x plus 12 over 4, which is 3. So we can say that the gradient of line 1 is equal to, the gradient of line 1 is equal to 5 over 4. Okay? Simple as that. Y equals mx plus c. You rearrange the equation, so y is a subject. You can read off the gradient as the coefficient of the x. Then it says the line 2 is parallel to line 1 and passes through the point E, 12, 5, as shown. Okay, so the parallel lines, this is parallel, this line is parallel to this line, which means I have the same gradient, basically. Okay, um, find the equation of line 2, write your answer in the form y equals mx plus c, where m and c are constants to be determined. Okay, so when two lines are, pa uh, are um, parallel, they have the same gradient. And to find the equation of a straight line, I need two bits of information. I need to have the gradient of the line, which they told us by telling us it's, it is... A parallel to line 1. So the gradient of the line is equal to 5, 4. 5 fourths, 5 over 4. And we know, we need to know a point on the line and we know that it goes to the point E whose coordinates are 12, 5. So that's all we need to, to, to use to find the equation of the line. So we can use y equals mx plus c. We can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If we use this, we've got y minus 5 equals m which is 5 over 4 times x minus 12. Okay now because they want it in the form y equals mx plus c I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply by this 5 over 4. Normally I would I would multiply both sides by 4 and then have it in the ax plus bx plus uh, b, ax plus by plus c equals 0 but this they've asked us in this form so I'm going to just multiply 5 over 4 with the x so you have 5 over 4x and multiply 5 over 4 by the minus 12. Well, the 4 and the minus 12 cancel out, giving you minus 3, so it's minus 15. And so you add 5 to both sides, so y is equal to 5 over 4x. Minus 15 plus 5 is minus 10. And there we have the answer. Oops. There we have, oh, minus 10, sorry. And there we have the answer to this question, part B. Okay, so we've got to do part C and D. So 5 over 4x minus 10. Y equals 5 over 4x minus 10. I think I might need that. So this is Y equals 5 over 4x minus 10. And the equation of the straight line was 4Y equals 5x plus 12. 4Y. 4Y equals 5x plus 12. Okay. Now, it says the line L2, which is the line we just found the coordinates of, the, the equation of, cuts the x-axis at point C and cuts the y-axis at point B, find the coordinates of the point B and the co coordinates of point C. So pretty simple. One for the point B, okay, we know that B is on the, uh, the y-axis, so on the y-axis, x is equal zero. So all we have to do is put y equals zero, x equals zero, you have five over four times zero, minus 10. Or you can say this is in the form y equals mx plus c. This is the y-intercept, which is minus 10. So you know that, therefore, the coordinates of point B, coordinates, you have to give the coordinate form, so it's going to be 0 and minus 10. Okay? And for part 2, it says find the coordinates of the point C. C is where y is equal to 0. C is on the x-axis, which so y is equal to 0. So we do the same thing, except we just... Um, make y zero, so you have zero equals five over four minus ten. Uh, so five over four x minus ten. 
Okay, minus 10. And we can multiply everything by 4. So we have 0 equals um, 20x. Sorry, 5x. We're multiplying by 4 to get rid of that. Denominator 4. I don't know what happened there. It's starting to lag again. Okay. So um, you're going to have 5x minus 40. Okay. Let me make some more space here. Well, this thing seems to be slowing me down. Okay. So we have uh, 0 equals 5x minus 40. So 5x equals 40. So that means x equals 8. x equals 40 divided by 5, which is 8. So that means the coordinates of point C are 8, 0. 8 and 0. Okay, so there you have minus 10, and here you have 8. Okay. All right, so that's part um, C done. Now part D says a line L1 cuts um, the y-axis at the point A. Okay, so it cuts the y-axis at the point A. When that's when... Um, because y, when x is 0, so y is equal to 3. So that's a point 3. Okay, when, when um, x is 0, it cuts the y-axis. So that's going to be y equals 12 or 4, which is 3. All right. And it says, the point D lies on L1 such that ABC is a parallelogram. ABCD is a parallelogram. So the point D lies on line 1 here such that this is a parallelogram. Okay, so we need to find the area of ABCD. Okay, so to find the area of this, what we need is two things. Uh, the area of a parallelogram is like um, you need to find the, um, the base times the perpendicular height. Okay, so the area of a parallelogram is the base times the perpendicular height. The base times the perpendicular height. So what we could do here is we could consider the base to be AB. This could be the base from A to B. Okay. This could be the base of the parallelogram from A to B. Okay. Now, what is that distance from A to B? Well, it's from 3 down to minus 10. That's 13 units. And the height of the parallelogram Okay, it's like the perpendicular height. It's like the distance between the parallel sides. Perpendicular distance between the parallel sides. So that could be considered the height. So this could be like the base, and this could be like the height. And what's that distance here? Well, it's up to C, and we know that C is at 8, so that distance is 8. So the area is 13 times 8. You have, a par you have basically a parallelogram. A parallelogram has this type of shape. I'm just going to draw it freehand here. Okay, actually it looks the other way around here on that. Up there, it looks like this. Let me just draw it how it looks up there. Yeah, it looks like this. <coughs> we'll start lower. Looks something like this. So as I said, um, this is like the base. And this is like the vertical height. Okay, so that was 13 and that was 8. So the area is equal to 13 times 8. That's 80 plus 24, 104. To make sure. Hundred and four. Okay, this is hundred and four units squared. And that's the answer to part D. And that's pretty simple. And there we have the answer to this question. Thank you for watching.